If you've ever been on an airplane, then you've heard the speech. In case of the loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will deploy. And then they tell you something very important. Put on your oxygen mask first, then assist others, those loved ones with you, in getting their oxygen mask on. That's how it is with the heart. You gotta get your heart back first so that you can play the role and step into the part of helping others get their hearts back. Welcome back to the Heart of a Warrior DVD Expedition. Many a man has bought into the idea that they need to craft or create some mission for their life. Well, how about this? Mission finds you. The first mission God will send a man into is the mission for his own heart. A lot of men, when, when they hear that for the first time, they go, wait a minute, what do you mean, get my heart back? Exactly. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. In this day of security systems, we have security systems on our houses, on our cars, on our computers. How many men have a security system on their heart? I want to invite you to join my friends and I as we talk about how important this mission was in our life. We're still on it, and God is at work giving us our hearts back. So there's this term about closing the distance. One of the, one of the key things that we want to talk about through this series is getting your heart back. When I, when I use that phrase, getting your heart back, where do you go? What, 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 what comes up in, in your heart and mind about the encouragement, the invitation, the, uh, the idea of getting your heart back? I, the first thing that comes to my mind is a restoration of innocence. That's what I think of. Because when you, you were just talking about, do we see that as Christ? And we want to. We want to live out that verse in Galatians that says, uh, it's Christ in us. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. We want that to surface. And, and we'll talk later about the so many things that stand in the way mm -hmm. of Christ in us. But when I get my heart back, it's, it's the heart that's been cleansed and restored and redeemed. Um, that is this new heart that I can live from, the redeemed heart. I mean, it's, it's a refreshing place um, to be able to begin to build from um, and to get to that freedom. And we're not talking about going and getting your heart back and then bringing it to God to grade like a paper. Right. We're talking about going with God to get your heart back. This idea of search me, mm. David, David, praise, petitions, you know, ask God to search him and see if there's any hurtful ways in him. So to, to be, to know that there's something available and yet there still seems to be this, our part of entering into the asking for it. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here it is, a fullness, a filling, an in Christ. This is what's available. And yet if, if we don't engage, see it, want it and, and enter into it, it just, it sits there in the picture. You know, it sits there in the, in the bowl. It sits there waiting. So there's something on our part to, to moving at this invitation. And I, I think somewhere in there, David had it right, praying, Jesus, is there anything in me that's in the way? Search my heart. Show me if there's anything hurtful. Mm -hmm. And, and we've, we've been on this journey for a while together. Are there, are there hurtful things mm -hmm. that, that have been held up and get in the way of us being the men, becoming the men, the beloved sons. You had a thought, Jim. Yeah. Well, just this whole restoration implies that at one time we had it or it's available to us. And if we come to Christ later in life or under, start to understand this message later in life, you might have 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years of unsettledness yeah. of not being courageous in the right ways, of, of rushing the field, of being judgmental, and to, to give all that up. To it's habits almost, you know, it's, just, it's really bad habits that have to be overcome 
by this knowledge, by this prayer that you're referring to, by um, uh, by a better understanding, by having brothers around you that can help you to to see when you're off track and remind you gently, yeah. or not so gently. Mm -hmm. Well, and in that process, which it is a process, it's it's God drawing us to truth, and Him drawing us to truth means He's got to expose some lies some that lies. we've believed yeah. about ourselves. Huge how we've misinterpreted some things that have taken place in our lives. I mean, there's so much unpacking that has to be done. So and what are the odds that we've interpreted our life well, or, or let's use the word accurately? Think about how often a text message or an email gets misinterpreted. If I can misinterpret my wife's text or an email from a friend, surely I've probably misinterpreted some other things that I was an integral part of a situation. Mm -hmm. How did that change things for you when you started to awaken to there is an enemy and he's been up to no good in your life and in your story that you might live as you said with lies lies about yourself lies about God lies about others that's going to cause a, a problem disoriented unaware so how did, how did that ingredient alone just when it came into light when it came into uh, a, a place where you could see it, that, oh my goodness, there's something that opposes my life in Christ. How did that help? How did that change? How did that alter things for you? I found that concept extremely freeing. The perspective change and the broaden the view that, okay, maybe, maybe it, it's not just me. Maybe there is something against me offering this. There is a goodness inside me to offer that. Mm -hmm was just a, fr a freeing thought. Yeah. So I think you're talking about the awareness of the enemy, yeah. of Satan. And it's obviously it's critical to our orientation process. And uh, I mean, it's at least a third, right? Because we also have the world yeah. and uh, the flesh, which we've talked about already, the bad habits and, and the world which says this is okay or that's okay, or this is desirable, or that's desirable. So it's certainly at least a third of the, of the battle. And, and being oriented means that we're aware of all three of those elements. Yeah, I like what you said, both of you. I mean, there's a little bit of comfort in, oh my goodness, here's some factors and forces that I did not take into account. A false self, this, this flesh, there's something in me that's not good. And there's an enemy of my heart and my life with God. And I live in fallenness. I mean, those are big ingredients. Yeah, amen. To, to bring a, a relief and an and, and understanding that, okay, now I know what I'm up against. Mm -hmm. But a man who's disoriented, who has no concept of those things, that's why, we, that's why you, most of us have lived so long without that. We've lost heart. We've, we've in, encountered struggles and, and trials that didn't produce faith. They, di they diminished our faith. And what's wrong with me and why isn't God helping. That's yeah, a hard, and, and that's men hard. men begin to lose hope. Oh, yeah. Yes. And uh, when you lose hope, I mean, we're in, we're in serious trouble. Uh, but understanding that bigger picture uh, from God's perspective, because God talks about it in His Word, there is a thief. He does steal and kill and destroy. He is a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. So understanding that that's taking place and you, you mentioned it, it's somewhat freeing. It, it is freeing to be able to realize it's not all me. You know, I'm not screwing this up again. You know, there is an enemy. I need to understand who he is, and I need to understand the how, plays that he runs works, right. in my world so I can replace those lies with what God wants to bring me to. Because you know, there is this, God wants to pull us toward himself. He wants us to to live out this newness that he's given us freely. But, you know, the enemy, you know, you mentioned all three, the world, the flesh, and the devil, those things, they stand in the way. They, and impede, they impede, right? They, they impede. They, they, they get in the way. Huge, huge concept, huge reality, huge opportunity for us to see. So personally, if you were to give, um, if you were to give a few words to what is it you think that the enemy has been successful at having you uh, believe that isn't true, but, but it is, it is felt so true in your journey. I know for me, um, you're, you're not enough. 
I mean, just, and it doesn't sound like it's, it's, it's him saying it like you're not enough. It's, it almost, it sounds first person like I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't keep everybody happy because I'm not enough. So there's this fallacy that that's my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's so many tentacles to it that, you know, I, I've got to make people happy. And what's on the other side of that is the, is the cookie that if they are, then I'm okay. I mean, I, the enemy has ran that play over me and on me for years. And to see it and go, oh my goodness, the diminishment that, that I've lived under, the discouragement, the, the disqualification, it's been brutal. Mm -hmm. And all the while trying to hide it so that people don't see it and think those things about me, exhausting. Does that think, make sense? I think there's some common themes that all of us hear. For you, it's I'm not enough. For me, it's it, there's nothing to offer deep down inside. Keep people on the surface. Don't let them go too deep with you. You don't really have anything for them to offer, Jim. Mm. Or, or another one is um, you're all alone. You're in this by yourself. Yeah. The, you've got to figure it out. This all got just really real all of a sudden when you say that. I mean, that, those are tender places for us to think about, you know, living in the nobody wants me, yeah. uh, I'm not enough. And, and all the time I've spent trying to earn that, and, and then I realized I was not only earning your love, affection, approval, but then, then living in that I've got to earn it from God too. It spills right over, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it and it just makes sense that it would. Yeah. This yeah. is how you've operated for years. Maybe you learned it when you were very, very young, very young, situations that, that brought with you okay, this is how life works. Draw the picture, mom and dad put it on the refrigerator. And that's a good thing, mm -hmm. but, but what comes along with it? Okay, I gotta draw another picture tomorrow because I wanna make the fridge. And then you grow older and what's the fridge become? Mm -hmm. The applause and the approval of others. I mean, the enemy works this. It's in us, we want to be seen. Mm -hmm. We want to be invited, we wanna be included. And yet, if we don't know how this works and what the enemy's up to, it, he will pound us with that. Yeah, it's just something to prove. Yeah. You've got to prove that uh, you belong. You've got to prove that you've got your act together. You've got to, you've got to show this external um, facade rather than back to the settled man who I don't have to prove anything. I, I'm going to walk with God and I'm going to live out how he has made me in the context of where he has placed me that's where we become more settled. So, Rather than having to yeah. you know, clamor for the microphone or yeah. you know, be the funny guy or um, you know, be able to speak to any issue because you've got to show that you know, I'm as smart as the next guy. I mean, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, so many of us struggle with having to prove ourselves. And then you know, the enemy throws this double whammy at you and say, yeah, man, you, you screwed that up. <laughs> right. There what, you go again. What if there was a way and I think we're all going to agree after I ask, what, what if there was a way to leave that life behind and, and take up this, this other kind of life? Really the one we signed up for but was so evasive. Mm -hmm. Some of it was lack of information. Some of it was not having help, a role model, uh, beliefs about God, beliefs about ourself. What if, what if we could go on a journey that would leave those things behind so that we could really embrace, you know, empty our hands, empty the attics and the closets and the basements of our heart, the things that aren't good, that, that we carry within us. They aren't us, but they feel like us. What if we could inventory, explore that, take up an adventure with God that would show us the hurtful ways in us and, and literally trade in, trade up for the kind of life that we long for but has been so, would you be in? Well, sure, and, and, but the beauty of that is that is the invitation. When Jesus says, come follow me, that is the invitation. Then the follow me is, I'm gonna take you on the adventure. To learn how to live. To learn how to like live, live in freedom and yeah. yeah. peace and yeah. empowered by the Spirit of God. That's what is exciting. That's and exciting. that's the, you know, we talk about that verse in, in Ephesians where it's the immeasurably more mm -hmm. than we ever bargained for. Yeah. 
And we're getting a little bit of a taste of that over the last ever how many years of, yeah. of, of living out the, uh, the fullness of Christ in us. And, and I just want more and more, more freedom, um, which is a little scary to ask for because more <laughs> because freedom it takes, means takes you into more unpacking yeah. and more exposure um, of some things that we need to bring to Christ. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's no going back. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, Michael, I think it was probably five years ago when I first heard that invitation from you that maybe there was more to, to be settled. And, and uh, two things crossed my mind. One, well, how great would that be? But two, that, that's, that's not sustainable. You can't really live that way. Mm. You know, of the 100% of my day, maybe 2% I experienced as settled and free. And the other, 98, was proving, hiding, and in constant fear. But five years later, through you know, an intensive walk with God, it's true. Mm. You can. You can live more. It is more. true. That's His desire for us, and it is possible. Yeah. And it can be, you know, the, it can be the ninety-eight percent. Mm. Mm. I wonder if it's if we have to if it has to have that kind of five years or for us ten years. Does it take that? I mean, for the guys that are watching this that are just getting into this message, I mean, do they have to wait that long? Why is it that we'll, um, if we're a football coach, we'll spend weeks and hours and all kinds of time developing a game plan and analyzing what the other team does well and doesn't do well and tendencies and all that? Or if we're um, in a sales presentation, we're going to look at the competition and we're going to have these great PowerPoints. We're going to spend all that time on orientation and figuring out the best strategy. But when it comes to our own lives, yeah. We just, we don't, uh, we, we just say, well, we can't do much about that, or that's in the past, or we, uh, how can we speed up that five or ten years that it takes to start to understand how much God loves us and how much He wants to lead and guide us? And yet we, I know we know this, it's actually those years that are the training yeah. that we need to go after the hearts of others. So it, you don't want to hurry it, you don't want to skip it. But you do want to align with God and, and walk with Him. This goes back to running out of the locker room unprepared, running out of the house, you know, ill-equipped for the day. So, so I think that's where we, time is not our enemy here. Mm -hmm. how, how whole do you want to be? How healed do you want to get? How strong do you, do you want to become? And there's, there's only one way to develop courage, <laughs> patience, understanding it's to be put in training modules call them modules of our lives where we're where that's that's the the need in that moment patience or kindness where the option is unkindness quick reaction and those kind of things so you know to well, we want it quicker we want it now i mean yeah. the microwave fast food uh, instantaneous messages yeah and that's and those how quick does it cool right how quick does it fade so you know, stepping into this to become wholehearted, I think this is going to be really good. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for stepping in to this primary mission of getting your heart back. It's your turn now. Take the time to talk among friends the importance of how you're going to let God heal your heart. How important the good heart is to the missions that God has for you in your life. A whole heart is critical to living in the kingdom and fighting for the kingdom and being on kingdom mission. We hope that you and your friends can explore the significance of the good heart. If you know God, if Christ is in your life, then you have a good heart and God wants to fill it with all the good stuff so that you can be deployed into the larger story.